Betty, can you quit being session and session nag for once? You're giving me a massive headache with all that constant harping. Wait, what? Ellie, I'm confused. I honestly don't get where you're coming from. What on earth have I been nagging you about? Come on. Isn't it obvious? You keep bombarding me with your texts and calls, begging me to visit Dad in the hospital. How many times do I have to repeat myself? I don't have the time to drop everything and rush to the hospital. I've got my own life to deal with and I'm drowning in work here. All right, I apologize but it's Sunday today and I don't think you have work, do you? Can you please find a little time to visit Dad today? He's really sick, you know. Haven't you heard what the doctor said? Her father might not have much time left. Nah. Uh, I've got way more important things to worry about. Don't you even realize that today is my precious spa day? And do you have any idea how much of a hassle it is to travel from the city to the countryside? It's not like it's a piece of cake to come running whenever you want me to. I know that Dad's hospital isn't a countryside but it really only takes about two hours to get here by car. See? It's not as time-consuming as you think. Only two hours, huh? Wow, you make it sound like a leisurely stroll in the park or something. Let me tell you, those two hours are no joke. It's a grueling journey, okay? Not to mention, it costs money to make that trip. Seriously? Is money the only thing that matters to you? Quit being a stubborn and just come visit our father. You're not a little kid anymore, you're an adult. It's time to start acting like one. I'm not this stubborn one, you are. I simply don't want to waste my precious time on money on something that doesn't benefit me in any way. Can't you understand that? How can you even say that? We're talking about our own father here. Why would you think that visiting him doesn't benefit you? You know he's worked tirelessly his whole life to provide us with everything we could ever want. Oh, here we go again. I've already told you, my time is not some free commodity. Time is valuable, you know, it's just like money. But you used to visit our parents' house frequently. But now that he's retired and facing health issues, it seems like you've been avoiding seeing him. Why did sudden change? Dad isn't even himself anymore. He used to be this proud company owner who would hand out money whenever I asked for it. I still can't wrap my head around why he decided to shut down his company, despite my strong opposition. And to top it all off, he's gone and done something as foolish as getting into farming. You it's just embarrassing, you know? You just made me look like a complete idiot. But now he's seriously ill and he needs us to be there for him during the toughest times of his life. Have you even stopped to realize that you haven't visited our dad once since he got admitted to the hospital? Look, I'm busy and I don't have time to waste talking to you. You should know by now that I'm the wife of a proud CEO of an IT company. My schedule is packed with meetings and parties I have to attend with my husband. So do us both a favor and leave me alone. Stop contacting me. One week later. Hey, Betty. I really need to talk to you urgently. It's an emergency. What's going on Ellie? Why are you suddenly reaching out to me? Listen up and answer my question straight. Have you heard anything about Dad's will? Did he mention anything about his inheritance? What? So you decided to contact me out of the blue just to ask about this? It seems like money is the only thing you care about, huh? Why are you so mean to me? I'll visit Dad whenever I find the time, but first, you better answer my question. Did our dear father happen to spill any details about his precious will? Like who's going to get his fancy house, land, and money? 
With his limited time left to live, as the doctor said, he must have prepared all that legal stuff by now, right? Listen Ellie. If you're only reaching out to me for these kinds of questions, then I don't even want to continue this conversation. If you're genuinely curious about Dad's will, why don't you come to the hospital and ask him directly? Honestly, I have no clue about his will. He hasn't mentioned anything to me either. What? Quit trying to manipulate me into going to the hospital. You're clearly lying. Of course, you know something about our father's will, because besides mom, you're the only one who shows up at the hospital to check in on dad. Well, why don't you go ahead and ask our mom then? Why come to me instead? You know very well that we always end up fighting whenever we try to talk to each other. Oh. Mom couldn't even give father to give me a straight answer. I tried asking her, but she totally shut me down and wouldn't utter a single word. It's beyond annoying, you know? Just freaking tell me already, geez. Oh, I wish it could help. But I honestly don't know anything either. Here's what I do know though. Mom said we all have to meet up at her place today because there are some important stuff she wants to discuss. Maybe it's about Dad's will, but I can't say for sure. You might want to come along and find out. All right, cool. I'm totally on board. Just give Mom a heads up that I'll be there, okay? Let her know she can't start without me. Thanks. Three weeks later. Oh, look who's here, the ultimate sore loser, Betty. Surprise, surprise, our parents have always favored me over you. It's crystal clear now, isn't it? That's why you're stuck with that pathetic storage shed while I'm sitting pretty with $100,000 in my hand. Face it, you're a lost cause. No matter what you do, mom and dad will never give a damn about you. They adore me because because I'm cute, sweet, and ridiculously talented. It's just how it is, sis. Deal with it. What happened was unbelievable. To be honest, I couldn't bring myself to accept it. You heard everything from dad's lawyer yourself, right? He said that he had our father write the will in front of him, with his primary physician present. They had arranged for the primary physician to contact the lawyer when our dad passed away. So, after our father passed away, he contacted the lawyer and the lawyer reached out to us. You even saw the will yourself, right? It's no doubt dad's handwriting. Quit fooling yourself and face the facts, loser. It's crystal clear that I'm the proud owner of that sweet $100,000, while you're stuck with nothing but that pathetic excuse for a shed. But how could it be? Well, looks like I have to cough up some chump change for that pesky inheritance tax, but who cares? I still have a fat stack of cash left from that juicy $100,000 daddy dearest left me. Guess what? I emerged victorious, baby. Yay! Me, the ultimate winner. I'm astounded that you took dad's savings from the inheritance so conveniently. It's truly selfish of you. Oh, look who's all green with envy because they didn't get a single dime from daddy's inheritance. You really thought being dad's favorite child entitled you to everything you desired, huh? Well, turns out I'm the one who hogged all of dad's attention, not you, loser. And let me chuckle at your pathetic attempts to contest dad's will. But guess what? Mom was on my side too, so it was a lost cause for you. But let's not forget that dad explicitly stated in his will that we are supposed to divide the savings and the storage shed fairly between the two of us. So, explain to me. Why did you conveniently ignore his wishes? Oh my gosh, seriously? What on earth do you have to complain about? You got the amazing prize of the storage shed next to dad's precious farm, right? 
The lawyer spelled it out crystal clear that you would inherit the whole shebang the building, the land, and everything inside. So, tell me, what more do you want? Honestly, that shed is a complete joke. It's like a measly 65 square feet, barely bigger than a tiny bedroom. It's just a dilapidated shack filled with ancient farming tools. But that's not fair to me at all. What? You're the one who happily agreed to let our old man retire and take on that vegetable farming thing instead. So who the hell do you think you are to complain now? Oh, and let's not forget what mom said, huh? As long as I don't whine about it later, she's got no objections. That means she fully backed my brilliant plan of dividing dad's inheritance between us. She even made it painfully clear later on that I get the cash and you get stuck with the shed. Pretty damn fair if you ask me, so quit your pathetic griping. But I can help but wonder why mom didn't support me in this matter. It just doesn't make sense to me. Oh, you're still wondering about that? Seriously? To me, it's as clear as daylight. Oh dear parents, just can't stand you, that's all. I, on the other hand, am their golden child. So it's only natural that they shower me with everything I desire and everything that's best for me. But I still feel like there's something seriously wrong here. Oh, give me a break. You're such a greedy little brat, aren't you? What a hassle you are. You've always painted yourself as the saintly daughter, putting dad's interests above everyone else's. But don't even try to tell me you haven't been faking it this whole damn time. Now that dear old dad is gone, you finally reveal your true colors and your real agenda for caring more about money than your own father, am I right? Pathetic? That's not it. Oh, don't you worry your little head. I've already signed that document, promising not to utter a single complaint about the division of our inheritance. So no need to fret about me fighting you over that disgusting shed. You can have it all to yourself my dear. Enjoy your little rat hole. You know what? That filthy shed actually suits a repulsive rat like you perfectly. Why don't you just move right in and make it your cozy little home? All right fine, Ellie. Whatever you say. You can have dad savings. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm actually quite content with the shed. It holds all the tools that dad used during his farming days. Sure, these items may not have any monetary value. But they hold sentimental significance to me, as they remind me of our dear father. Yeah, whatever, you pathetic loser. Now we'll spend some quality time thinking about all the amazing things I'm going to do with that $100,000 our dad handed over to me. Of course, I'll make damn sure to make the absolute best of my money. Three days later. Mom, it's me, Betty. Can you spare a moment? There's something really important I'd like to discuss with you. Yes, my dear. I'm here. What is it that you'd like to talk to me about? Look, Mom, I finally understand why you agreed to let Ellie have the savings instead of Dad's shed. You were absolutely right. I just took a closer look inside the shed, and guess what? There was actually something there. You know your father, dear. He always had a reason behind everything he did. And this situation is no exception. It's true, Mom, and you won't believe what I discovered. At first, I looked around the shed but I saw nothing special. Then I realized that the inside of the shed felt a bit cramped compared to the outside. After that, I stepped outside the shed and walked around to the back of the shed. The backside was adjacent to a thicket of various trees. And to my surprise, there was another door there. Way to go, my dear girl. I had full confidence that you would unravel the mystery. Your dad and I have always admired your intelligence and we knew you would come through. 
You certainly didn't disappoint us. Now, please do tell me, what did you do next to uncover the real inheritance that your dad left for you? Thanks for the kind words, Mom. Well, I simply followed my God instincts. I thought to myself if there's a door at the back, shouldn't it be visible from the inside too? But it wasn't. That meant there had to be a wall in between. In other words, there was a secret space only accessible from the back. The moment I figured that out, I couldn't contain my excitement. But just like they say, like father, like daughter. Your dad was always a fan of surprises, and it seems you've inherited that trait too. Do you still recall how you used to surprise you on your birthdays? Those were some special moments, weren't they? Yes, I do, Mom. And I always find myself tearing up whenever I think about those memories. And how did you find the back door key for the shed? I followed my gut feeling and rummaged through the shed. After a while, I found two keys hidden in the handle of a shovel. I went around to the back and tried one of the keys in the door. When I opened the door, the space inside was only about three feet wide. And surprisingly, there's a safe inside. It was a large safe from Dad's company, and looking at it made me nostalgic. I actually hugged the safe and I felt fulfilled. It was a true memory of Dad. And that's where the real inheritance lies. You did it, sweetheart. You cracked the puzzle that your dad left for us before he passed away. I'm so proud of you. I was absolutely stunned when I saw the contents of the safe, Mom. Honestly, I didn't expect it at all. I hope you really enjoyed it, Betty. It was your dad's special gift, so make sure to use it wisely, my dear. Mom, I was thinking, would it be okay if I moved the safe to your place? You know my house isn't that spacious, and it's a real struggle to find space for such a big safe. Yes, absolutely, sweetheart. Whenever you can, feel free to bring the safe over to my house, I have more than enough room to accommodate it. Thanks for your help, Mom. I'll give you a heads up about it. Over one month later. Hey, Betty. It's your sis, remember? Please don't tell me you've totally forgotten about me already, it would seriously bum me out if you did. Oh, Ellie, what's up with the random text out of nowhere? Wow, chill out. Can't believe you're getting all hostile. I just wanted to see how you're doing. But whatever, I'll be at your place today at 4 p.m., so make sure you're home to greet me. What? You're coming to my place? Why? What's with the shock? I've got some important business to discuss, so I'm dropping by your crib. And just so you know, I don't accept any no as an answer. I'm sorry, but I won't be able to be home at 4 p.m. to greet you. I've got some work to take care of, you know? If you have something to say, please go ahead and say it now. All right, all right, no need to get all defensive on me, okay? Look, just answer me honestly. Did you win the lottery or something? What? No, I didn't. In fact, I never buy lottery tickets because I'm not interested. Then did your husband get a bonus? Well, my husband's a salaried worker. He does get a holiday bonus, but it's not that time of the year yet. So I don't really understand what you're getting at. Why don't you get straight to the point, Ellie? What? Are you making fun of me? No, I'm not. What are you talking about? Money, money. You have it, don't you? Money? Yeah, I heard all about it. So a few days back, I coincidentally bumped into your lovely aunt. Our convo wasn't anything special until out of nowhere. She starts blabbering about this massive thank you gift. She claimed that you're the one who sent her a freaking $500 gift card just for visiting our dear old dad. So spill it, tell me the truth. Did you hit the jackpot or something? 
Did you stumble upon a treasure? Come on, fess up already. Ah, so that's all what this is all about. It seems like you're only concerned about that thank you gift, am I right? What's with the attitude? Are you mocking me? No, I'm not, I'm just simply asking you a question. So, where did you get the money for it? That's what I want to know. Well, from the inheritance, remember? Inheritance? Yes, I got the inheritance so I sent you thank you gifts to relatives who had helped us when our dad was still sick. But all you got was that dirty shed no one even wants to have. Yes, that's true. But you can't sell that for money. But there was a safe inside it and it contained the real inheritance. A safe? Real inheritance? Yes, there were watches in the safe and they were all valuable, collected by my father as a hobby during his lifetime. Mom told me that he had invested a lot in those watches. Then I consulted a lawyer we spoke to recently. I was told a few inherent valuables. The inheritance tax is determined by their value at that time. They also told me that a certified public accountant could handle it for me. So I left it to the accountant. As a result, it was found that the watches alone were worth at least $500,000. What? $500,000? Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, then I did as told, which is keeping the ones I'm emotionally attached to and selling the rest. Certainly, it doesn't make sense for me, who doesn't know the value, told on to such expensive watches. I'd rather someone who understands their worth have them. After that, I used the money from the sale of the watches to pay the inheritance tax and sent thank you gifts to the relatives who would help us. I also kept the pocket watch with our father often wore. It's not expensive, but it holds the most memories for me. Oh, for crying out loud, why the heck did you inherit a whopping $500,000 from dad while I only got stuck with the measly $100,000? That's beyond unfair. And let me guess, you probably have a stash of those fancy watches too, don't you? Well, there are still some in the safe. Then where's the safe? Tell me. Well, why do you ask? Why do you want to know about it? My goodness, you little brat, just tell me already. Sorry, but I won't disclose the location of the safe right now unless you can give me a legit reason that explains why you're all of a sudden so interested in it. Do you think you're a detective or what? Fine, I'll figure it out on my own. Just wait and see, you stupid mule. Three days later. Betty, are you there? You won't believe what just happened at my house. Hi mom, what happened? It's just really bad. Honestly, I don't even know where to begin. Just tell me mom, I'm here for you. Well, it was only around 9 p.m., but I felt tired so I went to bed. Soon after that, I heard strange noises. It sounds like someone searching for something came from beyond the door. I thought it was a burglar, and I was so scared that I didn't know what to do. Then I decided to escape through the window. Looking back, I saw the light of a flashlight moving inside the house. I was convinced it was a burglar, so I ran to the neighbor's house and asked for help. After that, they helped me to call the police. Wait, what? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Did someone hurt you or do something to you? Well, no, it turns out. It wasn't some random burglar after all. Guess who it was? Your sister, Ellie, who snuck into the house. Can you believe it? What? Is it Ellie? Yes. I think she was rummaging through the safe. After the police arrived, she tried to make a quick escape. In her rush, she bumped into the open door of the safe. 
Just then, an already unstable safe toppled over, falling right onto her as she tried to flee. So Ellie got trapped under the safe? OMG. Is she okay now? She was taken to the hospital by ambulance, but she keeps saying that her leg hurts. Honestly, what was she even thinking? How could she come up with such a dumb idea of sneaking into your house and trying to steal stuff from the safe? It's beyond ridiculous. I can't even begin to express how humiliated I feel at this moment. I've already made it clear to Ellie that I've severed all ties with her. From now on, I refuse to acknowledge her as my daughter. It's crystal clear that she's solely interested in your dad's money and never genuinely cared about him or me. I'm sorry, Mom. I understand that it's a tough call to make. Just remember, I'll always be here for you, no matter what goes down. Thank you, Betty. I promise you, I'll be all right. I just need some time to adapt and find my footing. One week later. Hey, Betty. Got any cash left in your pockets? I'm in a real bank here, and I could really use some money. Don't be stingy now. Cough it up. What? You're still trying to hit me up for cash? Have you no shame? You should count yourself lucky that mom didn't report you to the police for breaking into her place and trying to take those watches from the safe. Do you even realize how much you embarrassed her? She had to go and apologize to the police officers who came to sort things out, saying it was all just a big misunderstanding. Look, I was backed into a corner, okay? It's not like I had some burning desire to snatch those watches. Well, isn't your husband a CEO at an IT company? Why are you always trapped for cash, then? Are you mocking me, Betty? It seems like you take great pleasure in watching your own sister suffer, don't you? You're just awful, Betty. I honestly don't get what you're saying. I wasn't mocking you in any way. What's this all about? You're aware that my husband is in the process of divorcing me, right? It means he won't be my husband for much longer. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about that part. My bad. Listen up, I don't have time to go back and forth with you, all right? I need money, like right frickin' now, so cough it up. I don't care how you get it or where you come from. Just hand it all over to me. And if you don't have cash, I'll happily take a few of those watches that left you as an arrogance. That works just fine for me. Whoa, whoa, Ellie. Are you even hearing yourself? Who do you think you are, bossing me around like that? Now, here's a question for you. Why are you so desperate for money, huh? It's none of business, stop being so nosy all the time. Well, your husband told me everything, so no need to hide anything from me anymore. The truth is, you racked up a considerable amount of debt due to your excessive spending habit. Apparently, you had been spending a lot on brand name items. You already used th $100,000 you inherited to pay off your debts, but even that isn't enough. Now you're coming to me to scratch for more money, is that right? How can you be so gleeful while talking about my suffering? Are you even human anymore? Look, sis, please lend a hand to your cute little sister, all right? I'm completely innocent here. I haven't done anything wrong. So pretty please, help me out of this mess. I'm begging you. You claim to be innocent? Really? Why didn't you use some common sense before blowing your money like there was no tomorrow? And maybe? If you weren't so darn greedy and chose the $100,000 savings instead of that storage shed. You might have had more cash to pay off your debts. But hey, it's all water under the bridge now, and you've got to face the consequences of your reckless choices. No one's going to come to your rescue. You're on your own, sis. 
After the divorce, Ellie didn't receive any money because she had been secretly spending her husband's money recklessly. She was forced to leave her husband's house and had to settle for a small, run-down apartment. I heard she started working part-time to pay off her debts. As for me, I made the decision to move back to my parents' home after all the chaos. Of course, I'm worried about my mother, but there's another reason for my choice. Recently, I discovered that I'm pregnant. My husband and I discussed it and decided to return home so that my mother can help us with the birth and taking care of the baby. I wish I could have shared the news with my father while he was still alive, but I'm sure he would have been overjoyed for us. I'm really excited about welcoming a healthy baby into the world. Hi Cynthia, would you like to come over for dinner tonight? I haven't seen your images. It's been a while. What do you say? We can finally catch up. I met a new guy and I want to tell you all about him. Okay, yes. That would be wonderful. I feel like we've been so distant since I had Christine. I know. But I don't blame you for that. Being a mother really drains you of all your free time, right? It must be awful. I wouldn't say that. But it is a lot of work. So how six? That would be perfect. Great, I'll make lasagna. Oh, is there anything we should bring? We? Cynthia, please. I'm only inviting you. Seriously? I'm the single parent of a six-month-old. You don't expect me to just leave her at home. Have you ever heard of babysitter Cynthia? Don't feel comfortable leaving her with a babysitter. Trust me, she'll behave herself. And it's about time she meets her aunt, Margaret anyway. Christ, Cynthia. I knew you'd do this. Do what? All you care about is that squirming little infant. I'm not a mother. I don't plan on ever being a mother. And I don't want to spend my whole evening running after your child because you couldn't bother to spend a couple hours away from it. Her, and if I can bring my daughter with me, then I won't be able to come. Fine, that's your choice. But remember, the world doesn't revolve around your stupid baby. Just forget the whole thing. Jeez. Okay, enjoy your lasagna. The next day. Cynthia, your sister just called me. She was in tears. Why? She's the one who invited me to her apartment for dinner. Honey, I'm sure she was rude, but I really think you should cut her some slack. No. Anyone who treats my baby like that is not going to be part of my life. She couldn't help it. Why? Was someone forcing her to type those things? I'm not supposed to tell you this, but your sister told me something very personal today. And what's that? She just found out that she can't have children. What? Yeah. She had a fertility test a few weeks ago. That's the reason Ron broke up with her. He wanted kids, and he freaked out when she told him about it. Oh, that's terrible. I know. My heart is broken for her. And that's why I agreed to let her move in next month. Now, I know you should never put up with any negativity directed towards your beautiful child, but I hope you understand why she's so opposed to being near Christine at least right now. Yes, I do understand. Thanks for telling me. And promise you won't tell Margaret that I told you this. I just want both my daughters to be happy. I won't. I promise. Thanks, Mom. 
Thank you. A few minutes later. Miss Call. Hi, again. I know things were a bit heated between us and I wanted to apologize. I'm sorry for acting like that. I hope you're not mad at me. I'm not. Thanks. Great. I really don't want to lose you as a sister. And when you're ready to meet Christine we'll be waiting. Sure. Why the change of heart? No reason. Seriously. What gives? Mom told you didn't she? What? No. Told me what? She told you I was barren. God. I can't believe it. Both of you. She didn't say anything. I promise. And now you're lying to me? Whatever. Stop messaging me, Cynthia. We're done. Much, much, much later. Hey, sis. Congrats on the new book. I'm sure it's incredible. Margaret. Is that really you? Yeah. Wow. After so long. This is crazy. I've called you so many times, but you never answered. I know, and I'm sorry. But I miss you and I'd like to be a part of your life again. Really? I'd love that. So, what's new? Well, Christine's two and a half now. She's walking and talking. And she's just adorable. The other day she tried broccoli for the first time. And you won't believe her reaction. Yes. Yes. I'm sure it was cute. Anyway, I'd love to see you again. How's Saturday? This Saturday? Yeah. Can I come over? For dinner or something? Sure. But you know that Christine will be here, too, right? Oh. Totally. See you then. Several days later. Margaret? Where are you? Sorry. I had to go. You left. Without saying anything? But we didn't even have dinner yet. I know. Sorry for being so abrupt. But I'm sure you understand why I did. What? No. I have no idea. I thought we were really getting along. Really? You just left me in a living room. All alone. So you could play with that child. I had to take Christine to the toilet. She's still learning how to use it. Whatever. You were gone so long. And it wasn't very considerate of you to just leave me there. So I left. Okay. Maybe this wasn't a good idea. I mean, I don't think it's a good idea to have you back in our lives. I don't think this is gonna work out. Because I cut things short? Jesus, Cynthia. How fragile can you be? But okay. It's your choice. See you around. Three hours later. I should never have agreed to meet with Margaret. You saw her? Yeah, I figured she told you. She still lives with you, right? Yes. Well, she finally messaged me and asked if we could see each other. She didn't ask for money, did she? No. That might have been the intention. 
but she left after 20 minutes. She got mad that I left a room to help Christine with a potty. You're trying to potty train her already? Yeah, it's going pretty well, actually. But about Margaret? Well, she was here. She could barely look at Christine. Now I know that she's sensitive around kids, but it's been two years. I figured she'd have gotten over her issues by now. Issues? Never mind. And you're sure she wasn't there to ask for money? Yeah, I mean, I'd be happy to help her out if she really needs it, but I'm not that rich. You know this. You know how long it took me to save up for our big Disney trip? About that. Honey, I don't think I'll be able to go with you after all. What? Why? You've always wanted to go to Disney World. And Christine would love you to be there with us. I know. And I'm so sorry to spring this on you last minute, but I just don't have the get up and go that I used to. It's okay, Mom. It's still a few weeks away. Thank you for understanding, dear. And please, if Margaret asks for money, do not give it to her. Okay? I won't. Several days later. Hey, sis. Beautiful day, huh? Yeah. How are you and your lovely daughter doing today? We're good. What's going on? What do you mean? I've turned over a new leaf and I miss you. That's all. I'm trying to be nice. Great. Thanks. So? What's new with a wonderful Sophia? Margaret? No offense, but the last time I saw you, you rushed out of my house in anger. I did. That was a mistake. I talked to mom about it and she agrees, I totally overreacted. Yes, you did. So are things okay? You mean in general or with you and me? Both. In general, things are good. I'm taking Christine on her first trip so we're both really excited about that. And with you and me, I'm good if you are. Great. Actually, I heard about the trip. Disney World, right? Yep. In Florida? That's the one. Wow. That sounds like so much fun. Can I come? Actually, I think it'll just be the two of us. Really? Oh my god. We'll have a blast. I meant me and Christine. Oh. But I'd love to go with. And wouldn't that be the perfect place for us to reconnect? I mean, no one can get mad at each other in the happiest place on earth, right? Right? I don't think that's a good idea. Just consider it, okay? Sure. A few moments later. Hey, Mom. Did you tell Margaret about your Disney trip? No. Why? Did she talk to you about it? She mentioned it. I figured you told her about it. I didn't. She must have overheard me. Oh, I'm really conflicted, Mom. She's trying to reconnect. Again. And I really want to believe the best in her, but... I don't know. Don't. Don't reconnect? Don't believe the best in her. Cynthia, your sister is only nice if she wants something. I've been trying to kick her out for months now, and she's just not willing to listen. 
So, you don't think I should give her a second chance? Well, third chance, I guess. More like twelfth. And no. Don't. Even if she suddenly becomes the world's kindest sibling. Don't do it. Okay. The next day. Did you see the package I left on your porch? That was from you? Yes. The Mickey Mouse stuffed animal. Does Christine like it? She loves it. I knew she would. I thought it'd be the perfect way to prepare her for your trip. Thank you. That was very sweet. It's the least I could do after being so distant for all these years. Honestly, I've spent the last few days going through Mom's photos of you and Christine. And I've just been crying non-stop. She's such a beautiful child, and I can't believe I missed out on so much of her life. I want to be a good aunt. No. I want to be the best aunt ever. If you'll let me. We'll talk later. One hour later. Hey, Mom. I know you'll probably try to talk to me out of it, but I think I'm going to invite me to come with us. To Disney World? Mom? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Honey. I know, I know, but she was very sweet. And she had a good point. What better place to overcome her problems than Disney World? And I miss her. I really do. Are you sure you want to do this? I'm not 100%, but I'm really considering it. I know how awful May has been for us, but I think she's gotten over her issues. And what issues are you talking about? The infertility thing. Remember. That Cosby argument in the first place right before she stopped talking to me for two years. Oh dear, oh dear. Stop saying that. Honey, Margaret isn't being honest with you. What do you mean? I'd rather not say. Just trust me when I tell you that I don't think you should invite your sister on this trip. Why? Mom? Please. If you know something, you have to tell me. Your sister is not infertile. I know this. For a fact. What do you mean? You're the one who told me about it. I know. And I believed it at the time. But I don't anymore. She made it up. Are you sure? Yes. I've helped her financially. Twice. Okay. Honey, please don't make me say it. M-O-M. -M. Whoa, what's going on? I need to tell you something. Brace yourself. I paid for her abortions. Wait, what? Plural? Yeah, it's messed up. I know you and I have different views. And this stuff. But she reached out to me for help and I couldn't turn her away. I understand you were trying to be there for her. But deep down you know I don't support that kind of thing. I know, Mom. I feel so conflicted about it. I should have told you what I knew a long time ago, but I just gonna bring myself to do it. And now, I'm left wondering what she wanted to say away from Christine all these times. Honestly, I think it's because she hates kids. I know she might claim otherwise, but deep down I don't think that's changed. That's a tough pill to swallow. I mean, why would you pretend all this time? It's just messed up. 
I wish I had all the answers, but I don't. All I know is that I had to tell you the truth, no matter how difficult it is. Thanks, Mom. I appreciate your honesty, even though it's a lot to process. The next day. Does Christine still like her gift? Yeah, it's on her shelf right now. I know, but why don't you bring it down and let her play with it a little? It's too nice to be crammed up on some shelf with her My Little Pony dolls and stuff. Please? All I want is to know that my present is making a difference in my beautiful niece's life? Sure. Thanks. And check your porch. I sent her another present, too. Really? You don't have to do that. I want to. It's the only way I can make amends for being out of her life for so long. Well, thank you. I'll bring it in soon. Great. Are you still excited about Disney World? Yeah, but I'm a bit confused. When I said I kept the stuffed animal on the shelf, you said, I know. How did you know that? Oh, well, I just assumed. I mean, because you're still mad at me and all. Oh. Okay. Anyway, thanks for the gifts. Several days later. Mom? Have you been talking to Margaret? No. I avoid her. You're sure you haven't told her about anything specific? Anything about me and Christine? Like what? Well, it's weird. The other day, she gave Christine a Mickey stuffed animal. And it was cute and all. It was a bribe to get into your good graces. Obviously. Did it seem expensive? Yeah, it's pretty nice. Anyway, she messaged me today and asked about it. And she somehow knew that I stuck the thing on Christine's shelf. But that's where toys go right. And she knew it was next to her, my little pony dolls. She's never been inside Christine's room, so I had no idea how she knew that. Strange. And then she just sent another gift. Another bribe of some kind. Yeah, and it's a music box. A really nice one. Also expensive? Very. Why'd you keep asking that? Just to keep going. Anyway, it's this little wooden box, and when you open it up, place the theme song to the Golden Girls. Okay. Mom, that's the song I sang to Christine every night. It helps her go to sleep. Oh my god. And you didn't know that. So you obviously didn't tell her. So how did she find out? Is Christine in the room now? No. We're downstairs. Why? Don't you see? The Mickey Mouse is some sort of device inside like a hidden camera or something. She's spying on you. Oh my god. That has to be it. Why would she do that? Honey, your sister has problems. I'm going to call her right now. Wait. Let me tell you everything. But you already did. No. Everything. Margaret has been stealing money from me. She's broke, Cynthia. I'm sure those gifts were stolen. So you think she's casing my house? She's trying to find the best time to come and steal from me? I think it's more complicated than that. Mom. 
she's spying on my family. Seems pretty simple to me. Well, Margaret has been seeing someone long distance. Some loser she met online. She's planning to run off with him. And guess where he lives? How am I supposed to know where she lives? Florida. Oh. So I cut her off and took back some, but not all, of what she stole from me. She doesn't have much. And I think she wants to go with you to Disney World so she can get a free ride to be with her boyfriend. Wow. But then why spy on me? Think about the music box. She picked the exact perfect song. She doesn't know anything about you anymore. And she knows next to nothing about Christine. I think she thought that would be an easy way to get information so she can fast track the whole sister bonding thing. All she wants is for you to invite her on that trip. Yeah. I'm so sorry about all this. She's crazy, Mom. I know. I think you should cut her off completely. Maybe, but with all this information, I think I have a better idea. What? Well, I figured that if she's going to spy on me, I might as well show her what she wants to see. So, I'm going to go into Christine's room and make sure the camera can see me. Then I'm going to put my plane tickets and money on the table facing her little spy camera. Okay? And I want you to come over tonight when I know that she's watching, and I want you to tell me exactly what you just did. Loud enough for her camera to hear. You mean tell you that Margaret's is trying to use you? Yes. And I'll say that I already got her plane ticket. I'll hold it up and show it to the camera. And then, you and I are going to say we're heading back to your place to confront her. And why on earth would we even consider doing that? Mom, think about it. If we do this, she'll finally come to terms with the fact that time is running out. She'll realize that her only shot to get into Florida is sitting right here on this table. It's like a wake-up call for her. But if she's capable of stealing from you, then there's a good chance she'll do the same to me. Are you sure you want to wait for her to sneak in? That's exactly why we should involve the police. We'll have them waiting in the shadow, ready to pounce. Honey, that's a brilliant plan. I'm impressed. As soon as it gets dark, I'm coming over to your place. We'll make sure this whole situation is handled properly. More moments later. Miss Call. Miss Call. Margaret, answer your damn phone. It's too late, sis. I'm at the airport, and I'm already in line to exchange my ticket for tonight's flight. I'll be boarding soon, and there's nothing you can do about it. Margaret. You stole all the money in my wallet. And the ticket I bought for you before I found out you were using me. Yep. But once I cross state lines, there's nothing you can do about it. The ticket's in my name, and it's just a couple hundred bucks. So you never wanted to reconnect? All this time? You just wanted to use me like a used mom? Sorry. I tried to play nice, but I just couldn't stum it, spending another second with you or that little mouth breather. Please don't be offended. It's not personal. Well, you're not going to get away with it. See? That's where you're wrong. I already did. Oh, Margaret. Simple, simple Margaret. I knew you were going to steal from me. We were waiting for you to steal that ticket, but the police weren't there in time. Sounds like your little sting operation failed. And now I'm about to fly away forever. 
I don't think that's gonna happen. Look very closely at what you have, Margaret. The ticket is fake. And now I have proof that you broke into my house and stole from me. What? Well, you'll never find me. You're wrapped in freaking airport, moron. I know exactly where you are. But what proof do you have? This fake ticket? I'll just throw it away. Oh, you're right. That's the only proof I have. See? You got nothing. Oh, wait. I have video evidence too. Thanks to your Mickey Mouse. Margaret? You there? So, the airport security, being as sharp as ever, swiftly located her whereabouts without wasting a moment. They promptly handed her over to the real police, who wasted no time in charging her for both breaking and entering, as well as theft. But, let me tell you about the unexpected twist in this extraordinary story. As luck would have it, I stumbled upon some hidden camera footage on her computer that could leave you speechless. Turns out, those sneaky crimes were the only ones she had planned. Nope, not even close. The authorities decided to combine three separate charges related to espionage, citing significant violations of the Espionage Act. The penalties for violating that law are severe, my friend. So, it's no surprise that she is currently behind bars. And let me tell you, neither mom nor I have any intention of rushing to bail her out anytime soon. And let me just say, her deadbeat boyfriend. Yeah, he's about as likely to pony up the cash as pigs are to fly. Now, with all the legal drama unfolding, you might think her plans for a magical trip to Disney World would be shattered, right? Well, think again. Mom had a change of heart. And guess what? The three of us, without her troublesome sibling, embarked on the adventure of a lifetime. We had an absolute blast, creating memories that will last a lifetime. Now, little Christine might be too young to remember all the excitement, but believe me, she was beaming from ear to ear the whole time. And as for me... Well, let's just say that every moment was pure happiness.